Okay, today we're going to talk about dividing rational numbers. Dividing rational numbers. So put that at the top of your page with today's date in the top right corner. First thing we have here is a definition. Reciprocal. Reciprocal. And that's one of two numbers whose products is one. Okay? Um, now, Here's what reciprocal actually looks like, and you've probably used it in the past before. For example, if I do two-thirds, the reciprocal of two-thirds is actually three over two. Okay, This is what's called the reciprocal. Because all it does is take it and flip it. Now, it didn't make it positive or negative, it just flips it. And if we actually multiply that, we would do 2 times 3, which is 6, and then 3 times 2, which is 6. And 6 divided by 6 is 1. So it's one of two numbers whose product is 1. And that's what we're going to use today to divide rational numbers. Okay, so how do we divide rational numbers? I'll show you. So here we have 7 over 15 divided by 4 fifths. Here's what you do. Rewrite the first one, so it's going to be still 7 over 15, but to divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 4 fifths is 5 over 4. Okay, so 7, and remember, multiplying fractions, you just go straight across. 7 times 5 is 35, 15 times 4 is 60. Now we're not quite done yet, right, because we need to reduce. Uh, again, we could divide by 5, ending in a 5 and a 0. So divide by 5, you get 7 twelfths. Okay, try number two on your own. Okay, welcome back. Here we have 5 elevenths divided by 1 half. So I'm going to rewrite the first one. The first one always stays the same. But when we multiply, we have to do the reciprocal, meaning we have to flip those. So 2 over 1. So 5 times 2 is 10. 11 times 1 is 11. And can we reduce that? Well, these two are relatively prime, meaning that they don't have any common factors besides one in themselves, or besides one. So our answer would be 10 elevenths. What happens when you have a mixed number divided by a regular number? Well, I'll show you. We're going to change this so it looks like these fractions. So here's how you do that. For 5 and 1 third, well, if, if a whole, if, if 3 is on the bottom, it's 3 thirds, right? So here's what we're going to do. 5 times 3 is 15, plus that 1 extra is 16. So that's actually 16 over 3. Now, remember, every whole number is actually a fraction. And negative 7 is actually negative 7 over 1. So we're going to do 16 over 3 divided by negative 7 over 1. So we change this right here to a mix or to a uh, an improper fraction and we change this just to a fraction and any whole number to make it a fraction is just over one all right so now we have to keep the first one the same so 16 over 3 and we are going to find the reciprocal of this one so times 1 over negative 7 now the negative still stays so then what do we get 16 times 1 is 16 3 times negative 7 is negative 21 now it could be written like this or it could be written just 16 over 21 with a negative in front. Either way is correct. Try number four on your own. Okay, welcome back. So to make this a, an improper fraction, we're going to do 2 times 8, which is 16, plus 3, which is 19. So that's 19 over 8. And then remember, any whole number is actually just that number over 1. So remember, to divide, you have to multiply by the reciprocal. So it's 19 over 8 times 1 over 2, because the reciprocal of 2 over 1 is 1 over 2. We multiply. 19 times 1 is 19. 8 times 2 is 16. So it's 19 over 16. Now, we can change that into a mixed number like this, and here's how you do it. 16 goes into 19 once, one whole time. And then we would have 3 left over, so it would be 1 and 3 sixteenths. Now what happens when you divide decimals? 
it's actually the same as, as dividing whole numbers, but you have to change the fact that they are decimals, and I'll show you how. The second number here cannot be a decimal. You're not going to divide by a decimal. So we need to multiply by 10, because, and every time you multiply by 10, you actually just move the decimal over. So we're going to move the decimal over once to right there. So now that becomes a 4. But if we, move the, if we multiply this by 10, we have to multiply this by 10. So we're going to move this decimal over 1 as well. So that's going to become 74.8 divided by 4. Again, just move the decimal over once to the right for the second number because this needs to be a whole number. Then we just multiply like we typically do. 74.8 divided by 4. Now we already have the decimal there, so I'm going to put it up there. 4 goes into 7 once. 1 times 4 is 4. Subtract, we get 3. 4 can't go into 3. Bring down a 4. 4 goes into 34 8 times. 8 times 4 is 32. Subtract, we get a 2. Bring down the 8. Testing. 4 goes into 28 7 times. 7 times 4 is 28. Subtract, we get 0. So it's 18.7. Try number 6 on your own. Good morning, Roger. Okay, so we are going, we're going to change this decimal here. We're going to move it now twice to make that a whole number right there. So we have to move this twice to make that a whole number. So it's going to be 38.4 divided by 24. So I'm just going to set it up just like this. Put the decimal right here. 24 goes into 38 once. 1 times 24 is 24. Subtract, we get 14. Bring down the 4. 24 and 144, well, let's see. 12 goes into 144 12 times. So double 12, 24, would go into 144 6 times. 6 times 24 is 144. And subtract, we get 0. So we're done. So we get 1.6. Remember, move the decimal of the second number as many times as it takes to make it a whole number. And over here, multiplied by the reciprocal. Okay.